back now with Inside the Issues, where we are talking about the traffic app known as Waze and its impact on commutes and communities here in Southern California. There is a lot of anecdotal information about the effect that Waze has had, but what about empirical research? Well, that's where our next guest comes in. Alex Bayan directs the Institute of Transportation Studies at UC Berkeley, where he joins us now. It's great to have you with us. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here today. You have been studying Waze and other traffic apps for some time now. Uh, overall, what do you see as their biggest benefit when it comes to an area like Southern California? Well, I think the benefit of uh, traffic, traffic finding apps uh, like um, Waze, Google, Apple Traffic, and many others is that they provide ubiquitous traffic information to people. And so at first sight, when you think about the benefits of these apps uh, with respect to what we had 10 years ago, everybody nowadays has that information. And that is a great benefit. I think the one thing that people have not looked at is the consequences of what happens if you give everybody the same information. And you have actually made an analogy that this is a bit like people drinking from a river. Can you explain how that's a metaphor here? Absolutely. It's, it's a really good metaphor if you think about it. Um, you know, the road has a finite capacity, and anybody who is using the road wants a part of it. So the notion that people can freely use the road uh, to go to their destination is the same notion as that everybody at some point had the right to take some water in the river uh, when water was needed uh, for the local villages. And history tells us that, you know, at some point, regulation needs to happen. If you remember the river case, uh, you know, the fishers would have some uh, objectives, uh, the farmers would have some other objectives, and then the people in the village would have also some other objectives, and these might not have always been aligned. And in fact, in some cases, they might also have been in conflict. And that's what regulation achieved, the proper use of water resources. So in the case of the roads, it's simply the same. Everybody wants to use the road. Everybody has access to the same information at the same time. Uh, but if there is no regulation, uh, well, then everybody is trying to um, compete for the same capacity. And that's a problem. And as you've noted, this can especially be a problem when there is a crash on the freeway. And you actually generated a, a video simulation to kind of compare and contrast that situation when you have a lot of folks using something like Waze and when they don't. Uh, and we can see that right here. Explain to us what we are uh, seeing on the screen and what the difference is between when people have an app that they're using and when they don't have access to that sort of information. Yes, and you know, I think inherently all these apps are trying to do the right thing. The problem is that when there is an accident on the freeway, in general there is a concept of operation of the local agencies in charge, and what these uh, concept of operations do is simply they provide an alternate way to route traffic. This might include deviations, this might include reprogramming the traffic lights on the nearby streets, uh, this might uh, include a lot of different things. And most of the times, the apps do not have access to that information, so in order to route people, they will just compute the shortest path for everybody, put everybody on that same path, and make things worse. Uh, there's a few issues at stake here. The first one is that that information is not accessible always to these apps. And the second one is that there is some much deeper economic theory that goes back to the Nobel Prize of John Nash that says that if you give everybody what's best for themselves, well, that's not an optimal outcome for society. And that's a much more fundamental problem of these apps. So just to kind of read between the lines here, are you saying that in a situation like that, let's say you're on the 405 freeway here in Southern California, and there's an accident that the best case scenario when you look at the grand scheme of society as a whole would be just to sit there and wait in traffic and not maybe have fewer people on the road because they'd be getting off earlier? The actual optimal solution is a combination of many things. Um, in order to achieve an optimal solution where optimal could mean you know, the minimal amount of everybody's accumulated travel time on the freeway and the road, if you wanted to achieve that optimum, uh, what you would want to do is you would want to split the flows in a way that the entire network can share that same burden. Um, and what economic theory shows is that if instead you give everybody the same information, which is a form of shortest path or fastest path, 
that's not as well off. So the solution is not necessarily everybody should wait on the freeway, not at all. The solution is that some people should be given the information to leave the freeway, some to stay on the freeway so that cumulatively everything is smoother. And that is just something that is not done today. And how would you, we just have a few moments left here, but how would you determine who gets what information? Because I know if it came down to that, I'm going to be the one who's not waiting in traffic any longer, but I'm sure everyone else would too. That's right. And so there is a double layer in your question. Uh, the first one is, say for example, stay on the freeway now in that new paradigm is equal in time to leaving the freeway and take the arterial streets. Technically, maybe people wouldn't care that much. Well, I stay on the freeway, I leave the freeway, but either way, my travel time is 17 minutes, no big deal. But it turns out that reality is actually more complex. If you want something optimum, it turns out that some people might have to take a longer route so that overall traffic flows better. And that cannot happen without what's called broad user charge. Um, if you look at the case of Singapore, for example, um, some freeways have tolls and the tolls change over time. And the role of these tolls is exactly to make sure that the system converges to something which is a lot more optimal than currently done. And so for that, essentially what you're doing is you're trading the value of time against real dollars. And that's the only way you can really get people on faster or shorter routes because now there is a real trade-off. You know, if everything is free and if everybody has the same information, uh, nobody's going to want to take the longer route. So you need to make it a value proposition for people. And that is the genesis of road user charge, which I've, you've seen in the media and particularly in L.A., is becoming more and more something that people want to talk about. And something we will be certainly talking about on this show in the future. Alex Bayan of UC Berkeley, thank you so much. And as we have seen and heard so far on this episode, Waze can generate some pretty serious concerns about traffic, about safety. Well, what about user privacy? We'll chat about that issue after this brief break. <laughs> 